You're watching Chili Boy Productions. I'm Larry, Chili Boy Chill Son, and this is my review for 80 for Brady. Now, before we get into this review, make sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button down below so that you can chill with me on each and every one of my latest videos. D4 Brady is a 2023 comedy that follows four best friends as they embark on the trip of a lifetime to live their life to the fullest and see their hero, Tom Brady, play in the 2017 Super Bowl. The film stars Hollywood legends Lily Tomlin, Jane Fonda, Sally Field, and Rita Moreno. So you know around here, we live for a group of sassy, legendary elderly women. Obviously, no matter what the film was about, when I saw this roster of icons assembled for a fun little romp, of course, I was on board for the film. Now, <clears throat> being a Broncos fan, uh, I've never been a Tom Brady fan, and I certainly have no soft spot for the Patriots, or really, the 2017 Super Bowl. But even with my disdain for Tom Brady, I was still there to support my girls in this comedy. Get this out of the way, quick and early. Trigger warning! If you are a fan of the Atlanta Falcons, yeah, be ready to relive some trauma. <laughs> Hell, even as someone who is definitely not a fan of the Atlanta Falcons. I felt myself going through some sort of PTSD watching this comeback Super Bowl. Ultimately, I think 80 for Brady is a fun time. I'll tell you right now, if you think that the trailer looks cute and looks fun, that's exactly what it is. So let's go ahead and talk about those positives first. The biggest positive is in fact, our iconic leading ladies. All four of our leads are wonderful. They're truly delightful in this film. A lot of fun. And you can tell as a group, they're having a lot of fun together. And in turn, that makes you, the audience, have a good time experiencing all the shenanigans with them. Lily Tomlin is certainly the standout here. Her character is given the most depth when it comes to background story, and in turn, she's given the most depth to work with acting-wise, and obviously, she's up for the task and delivers the emotional scenes as well as the fun scenes. Rita Moreno is just having a ball, and honestly, her character has most of the big laughs for me personally, and Sally Field as, like, the straight man of the group is a hoot. And then we have Jane Fonda looking absolutely fabulous. Does Jane Fonda look any other way? They all come together for a group that has great chemistry. Really, the entire premise of the film relies on those four ladies having great chemistry. So they are the reason it works at all. So just the base premise is a lot of fun. It is based on or inspired by a true life story. This group of friends who supported Tom Brady had shirts made 80 for Brady. And it's a really fun concept. Obviously, when we talk sports movies, so often either we're focused on the athlete or we have like these male, young fans of the sport. So to see these senior women out there dipping it and doing it for the Super Bowl was a really good time and honestly helps to broaden people's ideas of what a sports fan truly is, what football fans are. We're all football fans in this country. <laughs> As a football fan myself, even though my team was not on display here, I could relate to what these women were going through for the damn Super Bowl because I'll be right there too, especially if my hero was the QB and my team was playing the Super Bowl. I also thought it was quite fun and funny. There aren't very many like laugh out loud laughs. There are several chuckles throughout. I found myself consistently just kind of giggling as I watched the film because there's some good little gags, some good sight gags, some good written jokes. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but it still has that heart that endears you to the film. So then what doesn't work so well when it comes to 80 for Brady? Well, unfortunately, ugh, the filmmaking <laughs> is the big problem. 
Green's grain, not good. The cinematography, TV movie level. The editing, ugh, not great. And then the sound work is like Tyler Perry Studios level, where everything feels clunky because it just doesn't flow in the editing and sound editing processes. We have these long gaps of just kind of like dry silence behind our characters really awkward editing going on that really interrupts the flow and that's unfortunate because i think if the actual aspects of filmmaking were up to par with what the ladies were bringing to the table this could have been a straight up really good fun time oh across the board instead it's a fun time despite looking like a pretty cheap made for tv film it doesn't break all that much new ground and isn't innovative in any way. You've seen this type of story several times over with the exact same story beats. A lot of jokes in here we've heard and we've seen with elderly people on the big screen doing things they're not supposed to. So it isn't fresh in that sense. Overall, I had a good time with 80 for Brady. It was exactly what I anticipated heading in. And obviously, that's what I came to watch. So how can I really complain? We'll say if you're not in it for just a harmless good time, you don't need to see 80 for Brady. And even with the best of intentions, the filmmaking makes me say, you can wait for this to hit streaming. That's probably where it should have debuted in the first place. It's a great, fun time to watch with the whole family at home. I'm sorry, ladies. No, I still don't like Tom Brady. That was my review for 80 for Brady. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead, click like down below and subscribe to the channel so that you are always up to date on all of my latest videos. Also, join in on the discussion. Are you checking out 80 for Brady? Or have you already seen it at one of these many early screenings they've done? Let me know your thoughts either in the comment section down below or you can hit me up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your continued support. Mwah. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.